gun don't shoot itself. There's a mental health situation going on here and everywhere in the country. Everywhere. And all we see nowadays is violence, violence, and violence. You're gonna either end up dead or in jail. We've had too many shootings, too much violence. Poverty is gonna get worse, and I also believe that violence is gonna keep on increasing. We're living in a dangerous time right now. Every day there's at least a gunshot. If somebody's not shot, it's a gunshot. They say enough is enough. This is a shooting response. The people out here are part of the solution. No matter where you go, you're going to have to work 10 times harder than the next person. Because we are minorities. We are from the projects. We are from the Bronx. The Bronx. We're black. We're Hispanics. And we're from the projects. That's all three strikes automatically. My nephew got murdered for senselessness. Um, that day he was supposed to come up to my house. He was walking away and they shot him in the back. And I heard it. It was, it was the worst feeling. It's the worst, just to know that he was on that floor dying. For what? So basically, according to public information, the young man, Joseph, uh, had a dispute and an argument with someone. They called his phone, and when he came downstairs, they, they shot him three times in the face, and he lay dead. He was only 18 years old, and he was, uh, he was a dancer. The, the reason why you see a lot of police presence here is because of people were talking about retaliating and coming to the funeral parlor to try to put more bullets in him. It really hit home to a lot of the kids, to the young adults, and they were angry. And they did want a revenge, and they do, they still do. But that's where I stand in the middle of everything and tell them no. So if I go and retaliate, what's gonna happen? More violence, more killings, more, more of everything? No. You retaliate, and what? I, I, I gotta bury another kid? I tell them, I'm tired. Travel, I want them to live life, experience life. And, and right now, some of them don't know that. Whatever they're doing now, we used to be in there done that. So we change our life and they see that we change so they can change too. So they respect what we're doing. What I do is talk to them, let them know, listen, we don't want no shooting, we don't want no violence. The violence just increased because there's really nothing to do in the neighborhoods. Poverty, we come from, you know, one of the poorest uh, boroughs, one of the poorest boroughs in the nation, you know? So, I mean, it, it's tough times and throughout COVID, you know. There's no work, you know, people's losing their jobs. It just leads to people wanting to rob people and, you know, go out in the streets and try to get theirs because they don't have a way of making any income. And they raise themselves and their parents are either incarcerated or drugged up or, or dead. Due to the pandemic, a lot of people have been enclosed. It's a lot of internet beef going on. The youth nowadays have no respect for each other. So, you know, you looked at one person wrong or you looked at one person's girl wrong and all of a sudden I'm gonna shoot you. You know, these rap videos and rappers have a big influence on these kids when they're talking about narcotics, when they're talking about carrying guns, when they talk about killing people. Right now, where we're at, we're located on White Plains Road in the Bronx. This is one of the heaviest crime areas in the northeast section of the Bronx. So we, we do our best to mediate things that happen over here. Because it can move from being just a talk, someone pull up, with a gun and start shooting, you know? So we have to make sure that we mediate this conflict from right now before it escalate into a, a bigger brawl. 
I mean, they're handing out guns out here like it's candy, unfortunately. And they don't care what age. That's what happened. They're making too much guns and it's a business and it have to sell. It's too easily accessible. But here is illegal, no, in New York? It's illegal in most states, but I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't cut the trick. The trick is that it's too much guns. And that's what the problem is. You never know what can happen. You know, with a city with 8 million people. Uh, with the pandemic going on right now, everybody is a little on edge. There's like a, there's a name for it, it's like Nightcrawler. It's called Nightcrawler, uh, basically just just working the night when, when, the, uh, when the TV stations, their staff workers are home for the evening. The stuff that I film is basically uh, car crashes, shootings, stabbings, a lot of shootings. And we sell it to the news. There's uh, a lot more shootings in the outer boroughs, such as uh, Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx. I mean, it's not that I make the rules, but it's a little bit more newsworthy when it's outside of those areas, uh, especially like in affluent white areas. Um, it devalues the fact that there still are parts of the cities that are ignored. For some New Yorkers, it's not a big thing, but at the end of the day, it's a shooting. Bullets don't have names, and once it's fired, uh, it keeps going until it stops. And who's going to stop at? A building, a car, or a person? Well, it still have no names. It, it always takes tragedy to make somebody change their mind. And my tragedy was when going to jail, facing the death penalty, and doing that time, and making it out of that situation, and saying, man, you know, I gotta be here for a reason. And now I'm helping, you know, the younger ones under me. We could tell them, hey, listen, we were there, we've done this, but look at us now. Sit back and think of what you're gonna do before you do it, because this can happen and I give them my side of the story. It's basically just trying to media and de-escalate it so it doesn't go any further. Stop these kids from shooting each other. Every two minutes, every three minutes, every day there's at least a gunshot. If somebody's not shot, it's a gunshot. The, the, the shot detectors are going off. Police are rambling around. Or you hear sirens all day. So like you said, anytime we stand out here, our safety is on the line as well. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing kids as young as 12 and 13 out in the streets with, with guns. At the end of the day, don't ask me to put the gun down or stop selling drugs and you're not showing me how I can actually get money to feed my family. You're not showing me how I can actually get money to survive out here. But we, 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 we are the voice. We, we, we're, we're here to tell people that, you know, it's, it's not the way, it's not a norm. And we, and we have to change community norms, you know what I'm saying? That's why I say I, want, I work hard to change that norm that they think is okay, because it's not. The reason why I still got my freedom, I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. They help you in the long run. And we go places where police can't go, you understand? Inside the hot zones that they can't go. When we go in there, we go in there to try to, you know, promote the message of peace and changing the mindset of these individuals to do better. Anti-crime anti was a good unit. I mean, they were the old, the, you know, they drove the old taxi cabs around and they could just blend in and see what was going on. Now, you know, it's just, uh, it's just one thing after another. You know, knee-jerk reactions don't, don't solve anything. Basically, uh, no one's being held on bail. 
uh, and everyone is being let out of out of jail when they're arrested. Police uh, can't enforce the laws the way we used to. They've tied the hands of the police. Morale is, uh, is an issue. It doesn't make sense to me that all these people are being shot in our city uh, and young children being shot in our city and, and no elected officials are saying a word. We're living on destroyed time where no one wants to take the time out and have understanding of what's really going on. I was very bad, you know. I was selling drugs and gangs, hurting people, and something had to happen. My son was uh, murdered, and he was only 16 years old. So this motivated me to, to stop other people from becoming my son. Really, the core problem, poverty. Despair, falling in despair. So when people fall in dis into despair, it's like, pick up anything right next to me. Like, you know, whether it's a gun or knife, you know, anything like that. So that's how I grew up. Everybody, well, the youth is specifically buying guns because one, they're scared for their protection. You can walk down a block and you're shot. But then somebody real close to me died because of gun violence. And then after that, it's like, damn, life already short. So that's what I did. I started distancing myself from people that I know was like that. I got my head on tight. I finished school, went to college and all that stuff. Right now, I'm just focused on doing better in my life and making sure me and my family leave the hood so we don't have to keep going through this.